Track undercarriage. Unique propulsion systems that have been better adapted to off-road use were a second major development that greatly advanced the evolution of mobile equipment. Off-road machinery is not designed to travel long distances carrying goods and people. Instead, the equipment typically moves more slowly over ground conditions such as farm fields, forests, mines, snow, mud, gravel, and rock and in loose dirt. Often requiring enormous traction force to push, carry, or dump heavy loads in these rugged, uneven terrains, equipment mobility is enhanced by transmitting traction force through continuous track type or specialized wheeled drive systems. Track machines, or crawlers as they are sometimes called, are the best propulsion system for traveling over soft, loose, uneven ground conditions. Tracked equipment uses long rubber belts or linked metal plates called track shoes connected to produce a caterpillar-like movement. Track system components are collectively called the track undercarriage, which uses long rolling track to distribute heavy machine weight over a wide track shoe or belt width. Track systems have much more surface area in contact with the ground than the contact patch that wheeled equipment has equipment has with its use of rubber tires mounted on metal wheel rims. Multiplying track dimensions of width and length and then dividing the weight of even the heaviest of machines illustrates that a track machine has the advantage of providing lower ground pressure, which can easily be less than 10 psi. Low ground pressure track is better adapted to soft fertile soils of rich farmland and forests or to loose, soggy dirt and gravel. Not only would heavy machinery using track systems not easily sink, but the greater track surface area brought about by using the cleat-like features on track shoes and belts also provides greater traction force. These cleat-like features found in track shoes are called grouser bars. The first commercial continuous track vehicle was a steam-powered log hauler demonstrated in England in 1901. Just a few years later, Benjamin Holt purchased the patent rights for the track system and immediately applied the technology to tractors cultivating California farmland in the United States. This early adopter of track drive undercarriage founded the Holt Manufacturing Company to produce tractors used for farming. In time, World War I British soldiers dubbed tanks using Holt steel track drives Holt's track machines caterpillars because of the comparable movement of track drive propulsion. The name Caterpillar stuck to Holt's equipment, which was later used when Holt merged with another company, the CL Best Tractor and formed Caterpillar Company in 1925. The versatile ITY of tractors to navigate soft, churned ground encountered in logging and road building operations led to the development of the military tank in World War I. During that conflict, Winston Churchill conceived of the idea of weaponizing the tractors while watching them haul equipment and supplies. Since that time, track drive propulsion became widely used by a huge variety of off-road machinery in particular, by bulldozers. Wide base pneumatic tires. While many types of equipment use steel or rubber belt cotton use track systems to travel over severe service ground conditions, tires are used where higher speed or mobility is required. That development couldn't take place until the 1930s, when pneumatic tires were introduced. The first application of pneumatic tires for off-road equipment was in 1932 when an Alice Chalmers tractor in Waukesha, Wisconsin had Firestone aircraft tires installed. Until then, the narrow, solid rubber tires used by on-road vehicles were quite useless. Wide steel or even wooden wheels with cleat-like projections were used instead of tires on tractors until specialized tire production got underway. However, since first being used on agricultural tractors in the 1930s, wide base pneumatic tires have become the dominant traction device for agricultural tractors and implements. Pneumatic tires superior speed, maneuverability, and reliability in comparison to track drive undercarriage make them the preferred choice for agriculture applications. Rubber tires also demonstrate a 45% fuel economy advantage over slower moving, high friction track drives. Newer rubber track systems, having many of the same advantages offered by metal track systems, are now ending the dominance of pneumatic tires in that category enabling track drive to overcome the higher maintenance and initial acquisition cost associated with track undercarriage. When using ballast, off-road tires offer more stability, which helps to prevent tire slippage in various soil conditions and to lower a machine's center of gravity. 
In addition to inflating the tire with air, adding ballast involves filling the tire to between 40% and 75% full with a liquid that will not freeze or filling it with a denser mixture of water and calcium chloride slurry, providing even more weight. When used on equipment with tall tires and high axle clearances, the additional ballast helps prevent vehicle tipping. When filled with ballast, heavier tires are less prone to slipping, spinning, hopping, or axles lifting off the ground. The load-bearing capabilities of tires filled with ballast increases substantially over tires filled with only air. Tire design for off-road equipment categorizes tires by service. Tread types are differentiated for use on hard-packed, soft, smooth, and rocky ground surfaces depending on the load they must support and the terrain encountered, each type of slow-moving equipment will have a unique tire designation. Replacement of cable systems with mobile hydraulic systems A third major technological development driving the evolution and sophistication of off-road machinery is the addition of hydraulic systems. Hydraulic systems on mobile equipment are used to transfer and control power on a wide variety attachments and implements. While hydraulic systems appear universal everywhere today, it wasn't until the 1960s that construction and agricultural equipment began to switch from using cable-operated systems. Bulldozer blades and excavator buckets all relied on winches and wire ropes that used mechanical clutches. Some older, lighter equipment relied on operators using tiresome hand cranks to manipulate cables. Development of new materials to fabricate hydraulic hoses such as nitrile rubber compatible with mineral oils was the first breakthrough to enable the use of mobile hydraulic SYS TEMS. Water as a hydraulic medium corroded metals, and friction between seals and linear actuators quickly led to leaky seals. Steam had an identical problem. However, in the early 1950s, French equipment manufacturer Poclain and other European equipment manufacturers introduced the first fully hydraulically operated machines. Initial resistance to the use of hydraulics was high. The usefulness of hydraulic power was first demonstrated in 1936 on a deer tractor. The mechanical rock shaft, a three-point hitch device connecting tractors to implements such as plows or cedars, was replaced with a hydraulic rock shaft. The configuration provided a variable height and could change the angle of the implement relative to the tractor. The value of this hydraulic-powered lifting device compelled all manufacturers to provide this feature, but the use of hydraulics did not quickly extend to other accessories. Problems with the earliest mobile hydraulic system slowed rapid adoption of hydraulically operated implements and attachments. For example, early hydraulic hoses were prone to bursting, and operators perceived the first leaky hydraulic machines as dirty and underpowered. In addition to the need to constantly top up oil reservoirs due to oil loss through leakage, components operating in dusty, dirty conditions wore out quickly. This happened primarily because hydraulic systems required high filtering efficiency of hydraulic fluid to prevent premature system failures. A second reason for slow adoption was that simple cable machine designs combining levers, pulleys, gears, wheels, and inclined planes were still relatively easy to repair and powerful enough for most of the jobs at hand. The development of more sophisticated and innovative hydraulic systems with more must-have features drove change. For example, hydraulic cylinders enabled the application of a downforce on a dozer blade for digging, rather than depending on gravity. Hydraulics' ability to transfer power through pipes and tubes to linear and rotary actuators led to equipment designs that became much more powerful, productive, efficient, and durable. A greater degree of machine control for raising and lowering implements also became possible, allowing greater precision while manipulating greater and dozer blades. Rotary power for functions such as fans, augers, saws, drills, and other traction motors could be introduced. Subsequent to refinements overcoming problems with early systems, operators rapidly adopted mobile hydraulics when they observed how blades, buckets, and booms could be moved more quickly and operated with greater force than what sluggish cables could manage.